for lesson four here of chapter 16, uh, I wanted to show you we're now getting into, for the rest of these notes, we're now getting into non-right triangles. So uh, for kind of part two of geometry now, we're working with this group of formulas that you see right here. So these three are the three that are dedicated to non-right triangles. So this is in your formula packet. So these are the ones that we're going to be using here in the last couple lessons for chapter 16. This is the one for lesson four that we're going to look at right now is the one half AB sine C formula. This is for the area of really any triangle. Um, when it comes to finding the area of a triangle, we know to commonly use one half base times height. However, the base and the height have to be perpendicular lines. So what happens in a non right triangle when you don't have perpendicular lines, like the ones that you're seeing right here, uh, is we need another formula. So that's where this guy comes into play. Now this one works for right triangles too. Uh, this, this formula works for any right triangle, or sorry, for any triangle. Um, we just commonly use one half base times height, um, which is like this, when it's a right triangle, because the angle that you would have in a right triangle is 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 is one. And so it's basically one times one half base times height. And so you really wouldn't need the extra piece here if you had a right triangle. There's an easier formula that already exists. But this does work for any triangle. And so in a case like these guys where I don't have any right angles, um, I can't use one half base times height. Um, I, I need to work with this formula that I see here. Uh, to keep in mind, this is kind of the standard drawing for any triangle. Uh, they label the three angles with capital letters. And they label the three sides with lowercase letters that are across from their capital letter. So if this is angle A, which is going to be a capital letter, the side across from him is side A, and that would be a lowercase a value. So anyway, that's kind of the standard drawing for a triangle here. When you're working with this formula, uh, the first thing you got to understand is, notice these are lowercase letters, so these are side lengths. This is an uppercase letter, so this must represent an angle. Uh, plus, whenever you use a trig function, you do the trig function of an angle. So this needs to be an angle measure that you see right here. Now, if you look at the drawing compared to that formula, notice that these are sides A and B, and angle C is the angle formed by those two sides. We call it the included angle. So um, when you're doing this formula, the, these letters are irrelevant. It could be, you could not see any letters at all. Um, it could be DEF, it could be XYZ, it doesn't matter what the letters are, as long as you understand that these are the two sides that form this angle. So this has to be the angle between those two sides. So looking at this drawing here again, you'll notice there, there are no A, B's and C's labeled here, but I do know that this is the angle between those two side lengths. Um, so I know I'm okay to plug into the formula that I see right here. So based on that formula, we're going to say the area is one half. I got the side lengths of nine and 10. I have the angle between those sides, which is 40 degrees. And so I can just plug that into my calculator and just do one half times nine times 10 times sine 40 to get my area. So um, if you punch all that in, uh, if we use a three sig fig rule, we're going to see about 28.9 for that area. So uh, real, real simple formula that we're using today, just a matter of taking the numbers and plugging them in. Uh, for this example two that you see, so I'm trying to give you just a little variation for examples two and three for how to approach these. Notice for example two, you have more than enough information, right? We have tons of information on this one. Um, so it's just a matter of picking a setup that works. And there's more than one way to do it. Um, I'm just going to pick one way of doing it there and we, we would all get the same answer if there's like three different ways you could do this problem right now but let's just say I wanted to work with that angle well if I'm gonna work with that angle then I have to recognize that this guy and this guy are the two sides that form that angle uh, so if I want to use that angle in my formula right now so one half a times B sine C. So 
If I want to use that setup, uh, that would be fine because I'm using an included angle between those two side lengths and that's going to work for me. Um, if I wanted to work with this angle, 34 degrees, then this guy and this guy would be my A and B value that I would be plugging in here and here if I wanted to use that angle. So we'd still get the same answer. It's just a matter of picking a correct setup to use to get your area. So anyway, if you plug all that in, you'd get an area of about 381 to three sig figs. So again, just pick a setup that works for you and we'd be good to go. All right, last example. For example three, notice in this case, uh, we now know the area and they are asking me for a side length. So in this case, I can use the same formula. So let me just write it down so we can see what gets plugged in here. So I know that the area is equal to, again, one half A times B sine C. So that's the formula. Let's just plug in some information. We know the area is 76.24. So 76.24 can go in for A. The two side lengths that we're working with are 17 and X. And the sine of, in this case, 29 degrees. And so just like any formula, you plug in everything that you do know and you solve for the one missing piece that we don't have. Uh, so in this case, I just have to get X by itself. Uh, so half of 17, uh, we're going to need to divide that over to here. I'm also going to need to divide sine 29 over to here, and that's what would get x by itself. So all this is multiplication, which means I'm going to divide everything that's surrounding the x over to this side in order to get my answer. So that's what we would be looking. So try that on your own if you're following the notes here uh, to solve for x. But if you do that correctly, uh, you should come out with x being about 18 and a half if you do that right. It's about so give that one a try just make sure you're punching those into your uh, calculator correctly uh, and see if that one works out for you um, I, at the bottom here I put a few homework hints these are problems that come up in our book um, that students have a hard time with there's sort of uh, some things that they prior knowledge that they would assume that you already know but let me give you a couple reminders so uh, for number two in your homework do keep in mind that uh, in this case they're referring to a parallelogram well, you got to keep in mind that for this guy, if I ever draw in a diagonal for a parallelogram, it does cut that into two equal triangles. So I forget what the question was specifically asking for, but let's just say they wanted to know the area of this parallelogram. Well, one way of doing that would be to draw in this diagonal, find the area of a triangle, and then double your answer uh, in order to get the area of the entire parallelogram. But anyway, so that's that's homework hint for number two. Uh, for number three, anytime you have a circle um, and you have a triangle within the circle, if the triangle goes through the center of the circle, meaning it involves the diameter of the circle, automatically creates a right triangle. And so we gotta use a little right triangle knowledge for number three. On number seven, uh, they refer to a magnitude. Just keep in mind that refers to the degrees um, of an angle. So when they refer to, like in this case, this would be a magnitude of 29. All right, so magnitude is the same as having degrees.